If you follow this channel for any amount of time, you probably know of my love for, or maybe obsession with, the LEGO Dactic Control Lab serial interface. Out of any of the devices that LEGO released over the years through the Dacta and Mindstorms lines, this has the most inputs and outputs. You have four passive inputs, four active inputs, and eight controllable outputs. Over the past year, I've used this in many projects, including controlling a LEGO train layout, my Galaxy Explorer display, and my computer-controlled monorail layout. All of these projects use the official LEGO Dacta Control Lab software, which I do have a retrospective video on if you want to see it for yourself. There are many third-party options for using the Dacta Control Lab interface. We're going to be discussing four today, two of which were created by Diego Baca. They were created for his GBC Towers 1 and 2. I will link to both of these videos below as well as another video that shows the software itself. With his Control Lab I.O. software, you can actually control up to four LEGO Dacta Control Labs at a time, which gives you enough to run 32 motors. And of course, to help us look at all these software options, I created a quick little test pad with some various inputs and outputs uh, so we can show how the software will control them or read the sensors. It's not quite as aesthetically pleasing as ones I've made in the past, but I threw this together pretty quick and uh, most of my blade tiles are already in use for other projects, so I didn't feel like tiling the whole thing out. First things first, we will connect our power supply in here, and like most things, it's just a 9 to 12 volt AC signal. Of course, you can use DC um, if you want to do that. It shouldn't damage anything. Okay, so we have our serial cable plugged in. So these are the four options that we will be using today. Each one will be linked in the description below. We'll start with Diego's programs. Let's start with GBC Tower, which was for his GBC Tower 1. So first off, we need to configure the COM port. And for me, I'm going to be using COM1 since I have a hardware port on my PC. Um, so you'll have to look and see which COM port you'll be using. If you're using a USB adapter, you may have to change what COM port is assigned. Um, I'll see if I can find something to link in the description for assigning the COM port number. Uh, again, for me, it's just going to be COM1. So we're going to click Connect. And you can tell when a software is connected if the stop LED goes out. Then you know you're good to go. And you can see the sensor LEDs will light up um, if they are pressed. Uh, but this program doesn't actually read the sensors as far as I know. So for me, I have uh, lamps connected on A, B, C, and D. And to me, these switches look upside down, but maybe they'll look right for you. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, we can control each of them individually. And I don't know how well you'll be able to tell in the video, but these are different brightnesses. And that's what this slider controls. Uh, so now these should all be at full brightness. And this is where you would change the polarity. Um, you can see the LEDs uh, changing up here, but that won't actually make a difference with uh, the right angle lamps. It will make a difference with the lamps like this or one like this, where one direction will be solid on and the other direction will be flashing. So let's turn on G and you can see that the lights are flashing red and blue. If we change the polarity or direction, uh, they will both be solid on. 
And I also have a sound element connected here. So it plays one sound in one polarity and another sound on the other polarity. And of course we can control motors, um, anything like that. So that's about the extent of the uh, first software option. Um, just a very simple uh, design, but very cool. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe both of these uh, can run on Linux, Windows, uh, you can run it on a Raspberry Pi, things like that. Uh, you've got tons of options. I believe he used a touchscreen interface for his. Um, I'll try to link as much info as I can find on that. Let's go ahead and disconnect and close this program. And let's try the next one, Control Lab I.O. And the thing that is so cool about this one, again, is you can control up to four Control Labs. I only have one connected here, but let's see how it works. So we can load configuration. And if I remember correctly, I believe I have one saved already. I do. Well, it's just set to full power on all of them. So we'll hit the play button and it's now running and you can see the stop LEDs off now. So we can turn on output A, output B, output C, output D. Uh, we'll turn on output G and you can see we've got the flashing there. And this is where we will set the direction or polarity. So you can see they're solid and back. And then again, you can always change the power level, which is a little weird with these lights, but <laughs> let's try it with a motor. So that's at full uh, speed. And you can also see the rotation sensor giving some input here, which again, the program, as far as I know, just completely ignores, which is fine. And uh, you may have heard the motor does not sound happy running at the lower <laughs> speed levels, but that was just how the DAC to control lab worked. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's some form of PWM, pulse width modulation. Um, but yeah, the motors definitely don't sound very happy about it. So this is the original ungeared nine volt motor. So you can get pretty slow with it. So you can actually go ahead and set your directions and speeds with everything and then hit play and you can have them all turn on and then turn them all off with this one button. It's very nice. And again, you can control up to four control labs simultaneously. So now let's go into some of the others and these will actually have readings on the sensors. Uh, let's try BrickLab first. This is one I found recently. And again, we're going to be connecting on COM port one. And you can see it's already got at least one um, reading from the rotation sensor. The raw reading on these is a bit weird. Um, but let's, let's look at uh, port five. So right now it's at 1024. The angle is zero. And this is just a simple control lever. So you can see it's already changed to one, changed to two, three, four, all the way up to eight, and then back to zero. So I've actually used this uh, in my previous video to control the speed of the motor. I don't have a way of doing it with this software as far as I know. Um, to me, this is just diagnostic info here. So I used to use programs like this to test uh, sensors that I got in. I just hook up a DAC to control lab, throw up some third party software like this, and then you can see uh, the data live coming from the sensors. So here's the touch sensor on port three. And these were basically just Boolean on and off. So they're just gonna go to 185, 1024. And then the newer style touch sensor was it had a little bit more granularity to it. So we're on input four here. You can see if I press really hard, it'll go all the way down as low as 35. And then it'll kind of go up as I release on the button. Um, so there is some granularity there. Um, that may just be because they wore out over time, but that's the end result with these. And again, of course, we can control all our outputs here. So we can turn on all our lamps on the top there. 
and we can also control our motor and you can see it's just going crazy here counting the uh, angles just counting 0 to 16 and starting over and we can control the speed here just like before and then this button here changes the direction so you can see it's counting from Sixteen, and then counts down to zero because we've changed the direction, and then back away that way. That's about all I know about this piece of software. Now, this is the first piece of software that I ever used with the Deck to Control app myself. This was available on the LGage website, and again, I will link to this, of course. So we'll start. We've got our serial ports here. Com one is what I'm using, so we'll just hit start. And it takes a little bit longer than some of the other programs, but it, it does eventually connect. And this gives you far more diagnostic info. We've got all kinds of stuff here for the status, um, communication status and everything. I'm not even really sure what all this means, but it probably means something to someone. <laughs> so again, on port 5, we've got our control lever. So, and it's reading in degrees here. to 180 degrees to zero. And I feel like this is a little bit slow. I'm not sure if um, what you're running on can affect the speed of this. It's honestly been very many, many, many years since I've used this. Um, all right, so we got our touch sensor on port three. You can see it goes down to 185, just like the other one. Uh, and it's also just because these ports, these, these are the passive ports here. So, you don't have to configure what type of sensor it is. If this was a temperature sensor, these were the readings we would get for 1023 raw reading. And then for 185, we'd have 162 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I actually, all of my <laughs> temperature sensors are in use since I started using them on my train speed regulators and the modified train speed regulators. Um, so I don't have one to show you here, but yes, this would give you a, um, fairly accurate uh, temperature reading coming from the temperature sensor in both Fahrenheit and Celsius uh, simultaneously with these numbers here. And of course we've got the other touch sensor here. And then we also have uh, for the rotation sensor on port eight, I'm going to run the motor on output eight and it'll actually give us an RPM reading. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, uh, but it's there. Um, I believe it, yeah, it takes a little bit to, let's go ahead and um, change the direction here so we get a positive RPM reading. So I'm just giving it a little time to catch up here. So I guess we're getting about 17 and a half RPMs. Uh, how exactly accurate that is, I'm not sure. Um, I do have a Lego speed computer, but if you've ever used that before, it's very inaccurate <laughs> and only gives you uh, the numbers which, uh, in increments of 20, I believe, if I remember correctly. So it's it's not the most accurate thing. Um, see, now we're reading uh, closer to 75, which that looks about right. I mean, if we if we look at the rotation speed here, eh. 75, we'll, we'll call that good. Uh, but again, the uh, controlling the outputs here is about the same as any other program. Um, it's just a matter of preference of what, you know, if you, if you can use something like this for, for diagnostics, you're testing motors, testing sensors, maybe you're a BrickLink seller and you just wanna plug something in and you can just go through as many motors and sensors as you want. And without having to configure anything or set anything up, you can get readings from all the sensors make sure they're reading correctly you can compare them to each other maybe you have several you want to put four temperature sensors on the passive inputs and see if they're all reading somewhat accurately together uh, this is what i used to use when i sold on bricklink and i wanted to quickly test uh, sensors and motors and things like that so again i will link all of these pieces of software in the description um, i could see using any of them uh, just for for different things they all have their strengths and weaknesses, but they're a lot of fun to play with. And it's awesome that we have that many options to choose from. Um, so I, I do want to thank the creators of all these pieces of software. And again, Diego Baca, I love his builds and I love that he uses the DAC to control lab. 
I know there's at least one picture where he had it like on a drawer that would pull out and I love the way it was it was created. It was just so aesthetically pleasing to me and so satisfying to see the Dactyl Control Lab controlling a GPC module. And I also want to thank all of you for following along. If you have anything you want to add, feel free to do that in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next one. Remember to play well.